Good everyone and welcome to another tutorial. You can also see this as a quick tip depending on the length. Um, today I want to talk to you about animating water reflections for um, anime style renders. You can use this for um, general renders as well. I know that typically for background elements, and this is sort of like a gray area for background and foreground, um, they typically try to go for as photorealistic as possible while also not overextending the um, equipment that they have. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to go more in that direction. So let's get started. First of all, you need a few basic objects. As you can see, I have this bridge that's connected. It's really not a practical way to connect a bridge. Um, but it's not about the bridge, it's about the reflection. So it's just to add something. So add a plane. This will be our water for the foreseeable future. Let's just make sure it's completely in the frame. Just get it like that. Okay, that's good. As you can see, I just have a basic scene set up with the usual um, I just want to change this because this needs to be a lot faster. I'm going to set that to 1. Okie dokie. Okay. So let's add a new material to this plane. Let's call this water and add the material. Call it water as well. Now a few things to note is that I did not use tune shading for this because I want to use this as a background element. So I'm going to use this on Lambert, and I'm just going to be giving it a bluish color. In this case, I'm going to go for a light blue, like that. Uh, specularity, I'm going to leave it on Cooktor as well, just going to make it a lot harder. Up the intensity over there. Translucency not needed. Let's close those. Okay. On Mirror, I put mine at 0.995. As you can see, it's very clear. Um, you leave the gloss on 100% unless you want to get it to like fizzle out. I don't recommend that for um, water reflections since water reflections never fizzle out unless the water is filthy. Uh, in this case you are going to want to apply a maximum distance. As I said I'm gearing this towards getting a good result but while also um, saving on resources a bit. So the maximum distance I used was 5. 5 is a, a value I know works for this scene, but if you are using a different size of scene, in other words, uh, your scene is much bigger in relation to that initial grid, then you may want to just um, scope this out. And we are going to be setting this to the same blue as we have up here, just make it slightly lighter. Less saturation. Okay. Looks good. Full oversampling. Receive transparent. Don't need buffer shadows. Don't need approximate. Leave auto revise for the sake of smoothness. And fade to material, not sky. That's very important. As you can see, there's a very slight coloration of the reflection. You can see it. Yeah, it's based on the sphere. Okay, so now we get to add our texture. So we are going to be naming this uh, ripples, or let's call it surface. It's not really ripples, it's called surface. Uh, make it a cloud texture. I set the depth uh, on my tests to zero. It looks good. If you want to add a little bit more detail, let's say it's a windy day or whatever, you can add more depth. It's not going to be the end of the world. Set this to ease, Just so it's a little higher contrast. And we are going to be using a an empty to control the speed at which the water flows. It's much easier than trying to fiddle around with offset over here. So just go add, go shift A and add an empty. Just use a plain axis, it's the easiest. And let's call it empty goodness uh, water flow that's good and now we can set this to the water flow over there 
Now we're not going to be using any color because the reflections are not supposed to be colored by our uh, normal influence and you can set the normal influence to be about 0.5. Now we just need to see what the texture actually looks like. So I'm going to be selecting a small area around the, the uh, legs of the bridge or the posts and we can see it's way too intense. So let's go to let's give it 0.1 Let's go into the camera, 0.05, so this is really going low. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's stick with this value. I want to increase the size slightly, that looks nice, and I want to make this look as if it's flowing f under the bridge. So I want to make this about 2, see what it gives us. Let's make it 30 so I can just scope out the size. Okay, this one needs to be lower. So let's make this one 1 again and make this... You can leave it at 2 if this one is 1, it looks nice. Okay, now we need to give this water some speed. So just add a keyframe, press I, Say location, move it to the end of the animation, in this case 250 frames. Let's say it moves in 10 seconds about that much. Uh, fairly fast, uh, leave it at that. Insert another keyframe. Now if you look at the animation, it's going to go slow, fast, slow. Many of you already know the trick to fix this. Just go Graph Editor, everything is already selected, press V, click Vector, and Extrapolation Mode Linear. The reason I use Extrapolation Mode is because it allows you to extend your animation without having to extend the use of keyframes. Let me show you quickly what I mean. The keyframes start here and the keyframes stop here, but you can see the animation continues. That's the advantage of using extrapolation. So you find a channel, extrapolation mode, linear. Okay, so that is basically it. So if you were to render this now, you would see this. Now if this is absolutely what you were looking for, then this is where you can stop, you can add compositing, you can add various other effects, you can reduce the amount of color influence on the surface, etc. You can fine tune it to your project basically. So I'm going to be rendering this out and that will be at the start and the end of the tutorial. Have a great one and God bless.